Lord, we thank you for your love and kindness, your goodness and your mercy. Once again, we always give you the glory and praise. What we do is we come to lift you up and to spread your word, to feed the people with knowledge so that they may get wisdom and knowledge, so that they may get an understanding, so they will not be afraid of the terrors by day and night. Lord, please, Lord. Have mercy on us. Give us the words to say to touch the heart and minds of each and every one that is out there. And this we pray in the mighty name of us, Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah. Thank God. Amen. Yes. I did a program called 10-7-23. And I said then when I ended it that there was so much, there was still more that I needed to add on. I said I was going to put it on Brother against brother. But you know what? That's what God, see, God has a way of doing things because I was wondering about brother against brother, about if I had enough info. But by me having to bring it over to here, it solves my problem. God knew what he wanted to do. And so we're about to bring Brother against brother, but we're going to close out with what was left on 10, 7, 23, because they all go together, especially these verses. And I want to introduce my co-host, Evangelist Fire. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are doing brother against brother, but we're going to start off with the scripture in Psalms 83 and 1. And I hope you got your pens and your paper ready because we're ready to roll. Let's go. Got a lot of information for you. I'm in Psalms, Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a turmoil, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They lifted up their head, mm. showing their ugliness. In Psalms 83 is a prophetic war. It is, it is so prophetic, it's unbelievable, and you're about to see what I'm saying. This is a prayer the world needs to pray. Israel's enemies are our enemies. Yes. This is a war against all of Elohim's people. Mm -hmm. We are Elohim's people. It, not just the Jews, the Christians too. Because he is after all the sons and daughters of the, of the, of the woman and the child of Israel. All of us, we accepted Yahshua as our Savior. So he's after us. This is an evil spiritual war against the Almighty. Go ahead. And it's uh, verse 3, still in Psalms. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from, the, from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. This is what they want to do. But this has been planned from the beginning. But God told us. He told us. From the beginning. Yes, he did. This is Psalms 83. Yes. And he's saying the very things that they are saying today. They chanting in the streets. Yes. From the, from the, what is it? From the river to the sea and all this kind of stuff. Yes. They want to erase the name. And this, that's why Psalms 83, you need to read this. Because it's telling you right there what their plan is. There is a brutal scheme against El Shaddai's mm -hmm. people. And to attempt to wipe them off of the map. 
This battle is not ours, but it's Adonai's. This is the end time war. It's started, okay? And it's going to end in Armageddon. Okay, I'm in verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagar Hagarines. Hagarines. Gibal and Amnon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asur also is joined with them. They have hoped the children of Lot. See, never in Israel's history has all the Arab nations lined up against Elohim's chosen people. Mm -hmm. Many are warning Israel to not go into the Gaza Strip. Israel's only defense is to enter Gaza and destroy Hamas. But, the, but from the West Bank, the threat of Hezbollah from Lebanon. It's, it started, Hezbollah, it is stated that Hezbollah is a hundred times worse than Hamas. Since 107, Jordan, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia have changed their position to be unfavorable towards Israel. There have been five wars, the Arab-Israeli War, 1948, Arab-Israeli War, 1956, Suez War, 1967, the Six-Day War, 1973, October War, uh, 1982, invasion of Lebanon, now the War of 20, October War of 2023. I see it end at the Battle of Armageddon. That's what it is. Let me tell you something. Look at how many wars, how many times have they had to, have they tried this and failed? Mm -hmm. All through history. Yes. They have attacked the Jews, tried to destroy them. But God said in Ezekiel, I will bring them back. He said, can these dry bones live? Can these, these dry bones have come back together? That's right. Now, we're getting ready to deal with it. Brother against brother, what is going on? Ten seven is just that. And it was told to us way back then. We may not have understood then, but we clearly understand now. Oh, yeah. That we can see with our own eyes. We're living it. I'm in Luke now. Luke 21, 16. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends and some of you shall they cause to be put to death and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation thereof is not mm. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The Bible will be fulfilled. It said it was going to be so, and so it is. That's what I love about the Bible. Yes, it tells us That's what's what going to happen it. before it even happened. You know, we did a program that said that, uh, let me see, uh, living in the blessed of times. Blessed of time. Though we are living in a time mm. of war right now, beginning of sorrows. Even though we are living in this time, we're living in the blessed of times because we're seeing God's word being fulfilled right yes. down to the end. And those of you idiots out there that want to go ahead on and and say from the river to the sea yes. and all this other God stuff and, and kill the uh, Jews, mm. You need to read Obadiah, and you'll see that 
before Armageddon. Mm -hmm. The reason why they're going to come up with this big army to try to go in is because God is going to restore Israel, not just with what they had during the time they was given it, but he's going to expand it all the way, as it says, to France, Spain, all down in uh, uh, Jordan and everywhere else. You know, that's right. You, you need, you know, and then he's going to cut all of you off that went against God, mm -hmm. went against him. You need to check yourselves. This war will be solely against Yahshua HaMashiach. And all the protesting, rioting, violence, and all led by Satan himself, and all that follow this path will end in hell. Why do you think they want to take Israel? It's not for the land to feel free. It's to destroy the holy land of Elohim. Look at what they did when they left Iraq. That was where Babylon was, the Tower of Babel and other holy sites. They destroyed every one of them, every one of the holy sites. The wells and everything else of Isaiah and all of them, they destroyed them because that's the plan. He's told you from the beginning. His eyes are set on the abomination of desolations. That's got nothing to do with Palestine or nothing else. Nope. That has to do with God Almighty. This devil wants to set himself up in Israel, in Jerusalem, on the mount. He wants to be able to stand up there and say he's God. This is what the war is about. This is what's happening. This brother against brother. Go ahead. Because when Babylon took Israel before, God allowed it because Israel had turned his back on God. So he stepped back and he allowed them to be taken into bondage. That's right. All while they were not there, while they were taken out of their land, yes. it was desolate. Oh, they didn't want their land then and they don't want it now. They just don't want God's people to have it. <laughs> it ain't about the land and it's not about the people. That's why it's a spiritual war. I'm in Genesis now. Genesis, all the way back to Genesis 11 and 30. But Sarai was barren. She had no, ch no child. And Genesis 17 and 7 says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee and to be and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan. For an everlasting possession. And I will be their God and I will bless her and give thee a son after her, also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Mm -hmm. That's what he said about Sarai. Yeah. But and he this is the covenant that he made with Abraham and Abraham's seed. Yeah, but he did not leave out uh, Ishmael. He didn't leave him out, you know. Not at the time that he was making. He never. He, he still never left him out. He never left him out, but this was a covenant he was making with Abraham and Sarai. Her name was Sarai at that time. Yeah. But he changed her name to Sarah, and he made her mother of many nations. The land of Canaan is today the land of Israel, mm -hmm. today. Now, Israel had to go in and fight to take the land. It wasn't just, as you might say, Palestinians or Canaanites. There was giants 
They fought many tribes of giants yes. to get that land that God had promised them. Several times, Israel, the Jews had to fight and their armies was much smaller than everyone else. Look at the Maccabees. Look at that. 6,000 soldiers fought against Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. Now, you know God had to be with them then. Yes. Go ahead. Um, Genesis 17 and 20. And as for Ishmael, see? see, he said God didn't forget about it. I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat, and I will make him a great nation, which God did. Mm -hmm. There's many, many that come from Ishmael, yep. the That's brother right. of Isaac. Mm -hmm. The land of that Ishmael settled was Mecca. Mm -hmm. The land was enormous and prosperous. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Genesis 25, 21 through 24 and 26. And it says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. Mm. And she said, if it be so, why am I this? She was asking the Lord, why am I, what's going on in here? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manners of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins mm. in her womb. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bears them. Genesis 27, 41, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Mm. He mm. said, when my father die and he's old, when he die, I'm going to get you. I'm going to slay my brother Jacob. Mm. Mm. Esau, like Ishmael, were not seeking after God's purpose mm -hmm. for, his, uh, for God's purpose for mankind. They seek after their own. They didn't care nothing about God. I, 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 uh, Isaiah, I mean, uh, Esau said it. I don't care nothing about no birthright or nothing. He didn't care nothing about that. They didn't seek after God like Jacob and Isaac were. They both seeked after God. Go ahead. Genesis 28, 13 to 15. And behold... The Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, and the land whereon thou liest, to thee 
will I give it and to thy seed and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be, be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places where thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. God said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be with you until all has been fulfilled. Jerusalem, Israel is going to be brought right on back like it was in the beginning, like it was all those other wars before. It's going to come back. You watch. This battle didn't just start in no. the womb of Sarah. It started in heaven yes. when the angel Lucifer wanted to be equal and above Adonai, but was cast down to earth. Satan has blinded the minds of them that believe not because of the lack of knowledge. The people perish. That's the reason why we're telling you these things, brother against brother. Mm -hmm. This is not something that is not this only way this is going to be solved is when our Lord solves it. You cannot fight your way into destroying people just to get your way. Because God, because this word is telling you. That's why we did that, pro that program called uh, Living in the Blessed Times. Because the word of God is true and it gonna, it's going to stand no matter what you, no matter what anybody do, God's word is going to stand. That's right. That's right. And it's going to come to pass. Just like he told us back then, he's telling us, for the last time, you see, just the last time that they're going to try to destroy Israel, God's going to bring it back. So now I'm in Matthew 20, 16, and it says, So the last shall be first, mm. and the first shall be last. For many be called, but as few are chosen. The last shall be first. Mm -hmm. You see that? Isaac was last. <laughs> Jacob was last. But he said, the last shall be first. Yes. This is exactly, God's word stands true no matter what. No matter what. When Sarah was, the, when they was fighting in the womb, Scripture says that he knew you before you was formed in your mama's womb. He already knew. He told her while they were in the womb, there are two nations and how it was going to go. That's because God know. And that's and whatever God say is going to happen. And if he say, I'm going to cut you off. And the Lord told me that all you running around here talking about from the river to the sea, you have already given in to the mark of the beast. But El, our Lord, still has plans for Ishmael. El promised Hagar that Ishmael, the son of Abraham, would become a great nation. The descendants of Ishmael became known as Arabs, basically means nomads. From the beginning, the descendants of Ishmael were a warlike people as they lived hostile lived in hostility towards all the tribes related to them. They, all, they even fought amongst themselves. Yeah. Ammon, Moab, and Edom fought with the Israelites. The Edomites are the descendants of Esau. The Moabites are said to have descendants of Moab. Who are the Amorites? The Bible say they are described as the descendants of Ben Amin, who was the son of Lot, Abraham's nephew, and Lot's younger daughter. Later, 
Another uh, settled in, later others settled in the Arabian Peninsula as well, including descendants. The Amorites, the, no, Am, uh, Amalekites. Amalekites, yeah. Unprovoked attacked the Jews in the desert. Several times they kept attacking the Jews in the desert. All descendants of Esau. And Elohim vowed to block them out from under the heaven. You don't hear nothing about them. Go ahead. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, first Corinthians now. No, Chronicles. First Chronicles, I'm sorry. 132. Ooh, the names. Oh, boy, here we go. Now the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, she bear, and I'm going to try to get it right, Zimran and Jos Jokshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua and the sons of Joskin was Sheba and Dedan and the sons of Midian was Elpha and Ephah and Hinnok and Abida and Eldai. All these are the sons of Keturah, which was Abraham's concubine. Esau's descendants. Esau's descendants among the Amalekites. You see that? The Amalekites. Among them. Among them. Amalekites. You see that? All of the, these descendants are, are come from Abraham. That makes them all brothers. They were brothers. Lord, we thank you once again for being able, for us to be able to bring this message, to show everybody that this is brother against brother and it's never going to end until our Lord bring it to an end. Help us to understand this, we pray. Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus, Messiah. Thank God. Amen.